And welcome yes, to it Yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> welcome to your local East Cornwall and West Devon Facebook Live on pregnancy. Yay. Yay. I'm not I... pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am not pregnant again. <laughs> um, I'm Heather, I'm one of the local volunteers. I'm Lindsay, I'm also one of the local volunteers. I'm Hannah, I'm a former local volunteer. <laughs> Who was pregnant whilst I was? Being I have. Oh, and I've got IBD. I've got, yeah. I've got Crohn's disease. We can do like medical history. I have Crohn's disease too. We all have Crohn's disease. Oh dear, yeah. We do have Charles so, in the background who's got has colitis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can hear her farting. And has had children, children as well. She and has, has children. Had children. I had children way before I had colitis. So. Oh, that is the way that to was, do it, was, man. <laughs> there we go. That's the live over. Yeah. <laughs> you before you've got Crohn's or colitis. Thanks, Shaz. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs> Say hi if you're here. Hi, Danny. Hi, good Danny. To see you. Hi, Danny. She's got you. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> cool. Do you want a question then? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's go on. If you've got a question, please just write it in the comments. You don't have to submit them in advance, but some lovely people have. I um, should probably say that we are just people with. IBD, yeah. we are not medically trained. We're this is just our experiences. Our experiences. Yeah. And we'd love to hear experience. your experiences in the comments as well. Yeah. Um, and if you're watching this on Catch Up, thanks very much. Yes. <laughs> in fact, our first on question actually <laughs> comes from another IBD who is currently pregnant. And she has a question that we haven't got experience with. So we thought we'd open it up to you guys and see if anyone could help her. Mm. Question is, I am looking for people's experiences of going back on infliximab after a few years of not being on it. I'm currently 12 weeks pregnant and my colitis is very bad. They are admitting me today for IV steroids with the view to restarting infliximab tomorrow, as long as my blood results are okay, so I have no antibodies. I know there's a chance of reacting on infliximab. I'm just curious to hear how people have gone on. I'm extremely worried because I want my baby to be well and I don't want to do anything that would risk the health or life of my baby. I mean, all of us here <clears throat> yeah. have had bad reactions to inflict some out, but, but not, not whilst, whilst we pregnant. pregnant. We, didn't, we didn't have it. We should probably clarify that sentence that we all had bad reactions to inflict some out but they weren't while we were pregnant. Yes. So none of us have got long-term experience of being on infliximab while pregnant. Um, however, I, literally the only two other people I know that have had anaphylaxis to infliximab, I'm literally sat with. So <laughs> this is just unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but it means that obviously we are very aware of that you could react. I don't know. It, I don't know because the, the questioner says that they've they been on it on before. It. So that suggests yeah. that they yeah. haven't had, like I had it like yes. my second um, infusion. I had was my third. It was okay. literally mine the... wasn't until about the eighth. I okay. See, so there you go. So... It's not, yeah. it's not great. Um, however, I think that whole anxiety around, oh my goodness, I want to do my best for my baby. Yeah. I can totally normal. empathize with yes. that. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter if you've got IBD or not. I think we all, that, that is just Most a fear of every definitely. pregnant yeah. mum. And yeah. I totally understand that. Um, my feeling on it would be they were so cautious with me on the stuff I was on while I was pregnant. If they are telling you that it's okay, then I think you have to take <laughs> that. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Um, I think I think that you, if if your medical team that know your medical notes and know your medical history are saying that this is what is right for you right now, I think you've just got to got to trust them and go with it. Mm -hmm. Would be my feeling. I Definitely. think yeah. I think the same with anything, whether you're pregnant or not. You have to weigh up the best options. Sometimes the bad sides of the side effects of the drug can outweigh the side effects of the disease. Um, I think the team are going to be aware that you're pregnant. They're going to be on call. They're going to be right there and they wouldn't put you on anything they thought was dangerous. So, and, and if they is, did, yeah. the danger would be outweighed Middle, yeah. by the danger to your baby yeah. of not having it. And, and also yeah. every you're... time you have infliximab, Kathy will come down. Or your she IBD still nurse. comes down. It tends might to be not Kathy. be. It might not be Kathy. It might be Nikki. It might be Emma. Um, or, or or someone in a different hospital. Yeah, depending. <laughs> um, oh, Bob. <laughs> I'd love Just to speak Bob. Hey. Yes. Um, Bob, if you're listening, get in touch. But for Dara, definitely, the IBD nurses still come down. Double check you, double check the medication, double check all your initial results for that day. They'll still do your blood pressure, blah, 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 like they do before they even administer it. 
I think I would say also, because I know we're going to talk about this on another mm -hmm. question that's already come in, but uh, like, what do your kind of like obstetric team say about it? Because mm -hmm. obviously you're under shared, you're under shared <clears throat> care at the moment. So if you are worried, I would, I, I ask to speak to, I mean, I'm assuming you're under consultant led care. Um, for you your might not have seen them in 12 them, weeks, 20, 20 weeks, weeks is when you see them, but you'll be under a midwife, so your midwife yeah, you, should be you, able there to we help go. you with yeah, that. So the midwife should have put you under consultant like care. If they will, but it'll be weeks, 20 yeah. weeks before yeah. you see them. But but well, I saw that, my, yeah. when I was under consultant like care, I saw them at 12 weeks. Right, we, I didn't see mine. I didn't see mine. I did. I did. Yeah, I maybe have changed that, but that. But, but then again, you might not. But be. it could be the difference. risk. It could be the you risk. You weren't a hundred percent when you were pregnant. Were this you? is true. I was Me all. Me and Lynn yeah. were all right, I so I don't complex. know whether yeah. that might be. We're going to talk about that. My, for, my story in the next. For you, thing, if you're not a hundred percent at this moment in time. You might see your consultant yeah. earlier, but there is no harm in phoning triage either. I no. know on your notes you it will say, triage. Yeah, yeah, it will say your, your the number will be on your notes. Okay. Feel free to phone triage and explain to them that you want to have a conversation with a consultant. Yeah, there is no harm in doing that. I know it will say on the front of your thing. Don't phone them until you're about 20 weeks ish um, to contact your GP. Don't bother. You want to speak to the obstetrics team and the gastro team, and they will work together. I, I think you do need to be aware that the obstetric, in my experience, mm -hmm. um, the obstetric team is totally treating you being pregnant. Yes. And the gastro team is totally treating you pregnant. Yes. Or your colitis yeah. or your IBD. <clears throat> and the only and you are like the unifying force mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you are the unifying force that's got to make the judgments about this and that so the ibd people will want to fix your ibd that is what their focus would be and the obstetric team will want to you know to, you to have a healthy baby but actually the two do have to coexist and i had a situation um that they were kind of disagreeing over me and i was the one that had to make the call on it so i would say get as much information as you can and you, you know you've heard what the ibd team have said i don't know if you've spoken to the obstetric team if you haven't i think it's perfectly reasonable for you to at least phone your midwife Definitely. and i don't think a midwife will advise <clears throat> you on this i think a midwife will get you will speak to a consultant on your behalf because a, a midwife will not want to carry that i think as well it's worth noting advice. i don't know every hospital is different yeah. every consultant is different I mean, I've been very fortunate. My obstetrics consultant is talking to my IBD team. So they are working together to actually plan a, a, all the way through they've planned. So it depends on your team. But if you're worried, get in touch with somebody. That's mm -hmm. all we can say. But if anybody out there has experienced infliximab whilst pregnant and can pass some comments this way, we'll keep obviously monitoring and we'll update you if we get any. And hi, if you're watching, can you say hi? There's quite yes, a few please. of you listening and only one person said hi, so please say hi, please. It would be lovely. Because it's a bit lonely. It There's is. only three of us. <laughs> We're just chatting. <laughs> I'm an answer. Go on, another question. Go on then. Those of you with long-term Crohn's or colitis, did you discuss beforehand with your IBD team that you wanted to start a family so they could advise you on the medication you were taking or any extra supplements or nutrients your body's needed to give you the best chance of conceiving? Yes, I did speak to the IBD team. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in there. I spoke to the IBD team. Um, I I remember um, I remember the appointment like it was yesterday, and it was right before I got married. And I remember sitting down with Chris Hayward, and I went, "Well, I'm getting married, so it's going to mean that I'm going to want to start a family soon. Any advice?" And he literally went to me, "Get pregnant, and we'll talk about it then." So I think it's more down to the fact of not putting pressure on yourself. Mm. We constantly think, I think, well, I certainly did. I don't know about you ladies. I constantly thought about my Crohn's disease and about how it would affect my fertility mm -hmm. before I'd even got pregnant, before mm. I'd even started to get, like to try, not that we, we did the old, we're not trying, but we're not being careful <laughs> so that it didn't put too much pressure on us either. Um, I had it in my head. It would take me years, years and years and years. And I stopped the contraceptive pill in January and I was pregnant by May. So it, 
it just happened to be one of those things that actually I'm glad we didn't try and pressurize ourselves. I wasn't filling myself full of multivitamins and things to try and keep me as well as I possibly could. I took a folic acid in the morning and actually I got to a stage where I stopped taking them, found out I was pregnant and quickly started them again. <laughs> um, because that was how it kind of worked for me. Mm. Are you Lindsay? Well, mine was complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, we wanted to try for a family when we got married, but we were actually told because I hadn't, they hadn't actually managed to get the Crohn's remission for it was coming up seven years. Mm. And I was actually told because of the surgeries I'd had, the medications I'd been on, especially when I was on methotrexate and it was an a absolute no no, don't even, you know, that it just wasn't going to happen. It wasn't possible. Just, you know, get a dog, move on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we did. That's, a dog features in my, my yeah. tail as well. So. so we did. And that was that, you know. <clears throat> I mean, we went, we didn't really try, like Heather, it wasn't really, we didn't, I didn't pump myself full of anything. I didn't. Do ovulation? No, I was going to say you're not there. Like <laughs> I, we, did, we just said the same. You know, if I wasn't on methotrexate at the time, it was kind of right. Well, we'll let nature take its course, and it just never happened. And then we got to the point where we said, you know, right, we have to actually start being careful now because of my age. And bam, there we go. And they here weren't. it is. <laughs> 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 mixture of both I suppose um, so I got married I had the conversation with um, Chris Hayward a uh, long time before you uh, years before you and he said let's see if you get pregnant um, and um, I was kind of like aware of all my surgeries and everything but I hadn't really thought oh I won't be able to get pregnant and I didn't get pregnant and I didn't get pregnant and I didn't get pregnant for five years so um i consider going, practicing there absolutely yeah. must what my husband said so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this is awkward this is this is like all right, I'm gonna stop talking. um yeah so um we were gonna have ivf which was another battle between um the gastro team and the ivf people because they wanted to put me on a waiting list and the gastro team said you need this really really serious drug which you can't be on and be trying for a baby and you need to be on it now so we went to the trust and we got IVF funded ahead of the waiting list all this kind of thing and I was due to have IVF in the November and um, you have to start the contraceptive pill before you have IVF so I was due to start the contraceptive pill in September and for any of you who have been infertile you'll know that you do not time your periods or anything like that because it's quite painful because you mm -hmm. want to be pregnant um so i didn't and i knew that when i got my period in september i was meant to stop taking the pill it was about halfway through september and i just thought i think i should be taking that pill you know <laughs> i'm sure i should be taking that pill and um so i said to my husband i think i should I think I, and he was like when was your last time your period i was like I don't know. Thinking about it, thinking about the great August I'd had with like lots of drink being in France. I couldn't remember having one in August. And then I went back to July. I remembered having one in July. And then I said, I'm going to take a pregnancy test. And my husband went, don't be so bloody stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Literally said that to me. So I took a pregnancy test. Boom. Pregnant. He went, do another one. So I did. And I was pregnant. So then I was eight and a half weeks pregnant on um, steroids, large doses of loperamide, various other things that I shouldn't be on, apparently. So I phoned up the GP the next day and went, I think I'm pregnant. And they went, yeah, give us a call when you're seven weeks. <laughs> Funny story, I'm actually eight weeks pregnant and I think I need a medication review. No, young John, we'll make a midwife appointment with you and, you know, there's not one for about three years. Um, <laughs> I, I actually think I might need to see a GP. Could you just check with the GP before you make a nurse's appointment with me or a midwife appointment? And I got a phone call back an hour later going, get in here now. So I went in and they took me off everything. So I was not on this, 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 this and this. And you just immediately what that first question was you immediately go oh my god my baby my baby my baby and i was thinking about all the drink i'd had over the summer i mean i'm not an alcoholic but <laughs> i'm a social <laughs> drinker <laughs> 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 there's been a lot of socialized 
is it in your own little summer? <laughs> um, and um, so I went in and the GP was like, took me off everything, which I then had like a bit of an anxiety attack about that because, you know, like my emodium is like how I get through the day and stuff. And I was like, how am I going to be pregnant and not an emodium? And I couldn't tell anyone at work. And I'm like, well, this is a nightmare. So then I phoned gastro. So then I got an emergency appointment with gastro about three days later and they put me back on everything. Um, and this is kind of like my experience that kind of like, but that was primary care versus gastro. And then, um, so yeah, it was quite, quite different to both of you. Yeah, I, exactly think, yeah, you I think the, med the medication yeah. worry is, is you, you're like, oh my God, I've been taken. I mean, I was on high doses of painkillers and I was like, oh my God. Cause I, I was about six weeks when we, well, that's out. what they told me mm. to take instead of the emodium. I was like, I can't get through the day. I can't go to work without my emodium. Do you know what I mean? Two see, when I... And they said, take codeine. No, see, when <laughs> I, me up I rang up and had the medication review, as soon as I found out, they took me off the painkillers, but told me I'd got to continue with the paramount and the omeprazole they'd got to stay. But th this is the thing. I think that this is the thing. That, that was I, GP and IBD department. This is the thing that I always say about being or having IBD is that you are the boss and yeah. these this is all interpretations of and that's what like obviously medicine is a science but there is an art to it like how you treat a person because every person is different yeah. and they obviously looked at my notes and one one doctor you know interpreted that as the best thing and another doctor interpreted mm. that as the best thing um and so I mean the, the to answer the question that was a long version of it I was on steroids throughout my pregnancy which is not um suggested so they would have tried to take me off the steroids if they'd known that i was about to get pregnant but let's be honest no one knew i was going to get pregnant um so i basically was on that so that meant that they couldn't take me off so because that would have been bad to take me mm. off steroids which is why the original person when they said that they were going to have like an infusion yeah um they <clears> were um I was like, well, that they've got to have a damn good reason to put any yeah. steroids into you when you're pregnant because it can affect the growth of the baby. So I had to have growth scans and I had to have two, no, I had three glucose tolerance tests. Mm -hmm. Have you had glucose? Glucose tests. Right. We're sorry. sorry about the connection. Sorry. technical issues. Add a medication instead of not. Right. So in the morning <laughs> you go and you're not allowed to eat anything and they test your resting glucose in your blood as a resting. And they feed you glucose. And, and they give test you it again. In like four or five hours. Yeah. Um, and four hours. So you have to sit in the hospital and not move for four hours. Um, and you have to sit in the room generally with like Jeremy Kyle on. I know that's not on anymore, but it was dreadful. Like some of the people in there. Is it? Well, it was. It was pretty dodge. Um, and I went in and they said, "Have you had anything?" And I said, "Yeah, I've had my um, little paramide, my emodium." And they were like, oh my goodness, we're gonna have to go and chat with the consultant because you're not meant to have anything. And I'm like, well, I have to have my drugs. I have to yeah. have, and they were like, well, they might be, they might be sugar coated, in which case you would have ruined the test. And the number one rule of pregnancy is you don't upset the pregnant lady. And that lady mm -hmm. should have known that. Tell you what, and that's know. all I'm saying. <laughs> no one should upset the pregnant lady ever. So, and I had to have three of those, and I also had to have monthly growth scans because i was on steroids yeah. um which when they're little bit little, tiny it's really lovely yeah um but like by the end of it you just saw like an elbow yeah do you know what i mean they're just a bit we've just i've just yeah. had a growth scan yesterday um <laughs> and they're not cute you, just, you can't see anything now except like, like either the top of the head or the bum yeah because they're too big <laughs> And get nice yeah. little cute scans yeah. and they're like, oh. People are like, oh, are you oh. going to get a photo? And I'm like, really, yeah. like, I could just, you know. See, my, yeah. just my, I was exactly the same, but when I went to have my growth scan, I think my last growth scan was called really, really late in my pregnancy. And I took one look at the, like, couch thing that you've got to lie on. I thought, oh, I've got to get back off that. Oh, no. And, it's <laughs> and full, I just it's, can't it's, be arsed. It's full <laughs> of women who are not as heavy. Yeah. And it's kind of like yeah. your first kind of, like, thing, isn't it? And you can't, like, walk in, like... Oh, yeah. I was, you know, I was really heavy, really and they like look like. I think really I, I'm with Nana on this one. I, I walked in really yesterday and thought with with, with Ozzy, <laughs> I was so tiny with him, but he was 
I'm just throwing you off the line. Completely <laughs> normal. <laughs> yeah. A completely normal away. size baby. It just we assumed because I had so much bowel taken out, you just sort of <laughs> took up <laughs> took up that space. Um, but basically That's I looked ridiculous. <laughs> We did say we don't do medical advice. I looked ridiculous that, you know, you'd go up to reception and they'd be like, oh, yes, and how many weeks pregnant are you? And I'd be like, oh, 36. And they'd be like, (laughs) she can't count. (laughs) And I'd be like, like, I am, but I'd still walk like a 36 week pregnant woman, like, you know, hips are like, oh, my back's like, ow. I'm I'm just fed up now. I'm ready to have him. I was walking like it with tiny little bump, tiny, yeah. teeny, teeny, tiny. And, and yeah, you'd look at the medical professionals being like, I think she's being a bit over dramatic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I, I, I can't actually have, I don't know how you felt. So what's your, cause you're, 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 you are currently going you're massive, massive, you know, right now. No, no, I was gonna say that. I was gonna say, it's all right, my husband called me chunky. So <laughs> right, right, right. right. So, but you're pregnant right now, so what's your experience yes. of kind of like, have they taken you off drugs? Have they given you advice? Are you, you know, are you they, having to have growth scans? As I said earlier, they kept me on the liparamide and the meprazole, um, obviously folic acid, but mm-hmm. I've been on that since they took my <clears throat> amount anyway. So that's, and that's all I'm on. Well, yeah, that's that. what I was going to say, I'm on folic acid yeah. all the time now. Um, you? Well, I, I had my alien removed about four years ago. And oh, since then I've had, had to take it. Now. Oh. oh yeah, because it's the the more bow you have, like harder Heather, you is might to, want to seek medical advice. Well, whenever, Kathy! <laughs> whenever I have a rich, we should have a pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, whenever you have, whenever I've had like a really bad flower, and you end up, you know, having to go and have mm. the dietitian, and you're like, all right, yeah, here I am. Unless it's Lucy. Unless it's Lucy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but and they always go, they put me on like all this stuff. I'm on this other multivitamin, Forceval. Which oh I'm on, yes, I've heard of that. But I'm on that permanently now. They've just oh. said never go off that because yeah. you've had so much bowel out. And then if you do start losing like nutrients from your diet, yeah. it's easier to supplement because we'll know at least you've got. You will always have that core bottom line because obviously there's some things I'll eat and some things I won't eat. And if I'm like not well, I'll kind of like cut out certain food yeah. groups. So, so they say I'm permanently so I'm on D and, and folic acid. Then yeah. that's for yeah. life. And at the moment, on iron, liquid iron as well that drop too low so and i can't tolerate the tablet version and i go into anaphylactic shock from the infusion one so i have to take the liquid one i once <laughs> was um dating somebody um this is what before i got with my husband Damien, are you listening? and they were at my house and i had because i've been on folic acid for yeah. years and i had the folic acid which just got a pregnant lady because generally you can't uh, buy folic yeah. acid without a picture yeah. of a pregnant woman oh, on there yeah. when i was like you know 23 or something i had no intention of having a baby <laughs> you all know i couldn't have done anyway but anyway and this guy basically went up used my loo and came back downstairs and Did he was run? like uh why have you got like pregnancy <laughs> like it? <laughs> and basically yeah he basically just legged it basically so anyway stacy says mm-hmm. Mark says i, re- Hello, I remained on the captopurin and pentasa during mm-hmm. my or pentasa I call it Pentasa. You I may call, call it Pentasa. pentasa. So tomato, yeah. tomato. Yeah. <laughs> During my pregnancy and breastfeeding, not sure what the guidelines are now. Fantastic. So it's good yeah. Thank you for joining in, Stacey. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Um, so, Macaptopurine. Yeah, because that is, I was on that. I'm on that. Are you? I was allergic to it. That's 6M. I was allergic to it as well. We've got so much in common. Mm. Never so, had I'm it. not pregnant. I've never Not now. You've been there. Yeah, I've been there. I've never had it. But fantastic for you for being yeah. able to get through your pregnancy and I'm breastfeeding. Yeah. Like, amazing, honestly. It is really the guidelines, good. there's a <laughs> pregnancy yeah. and IBD. On that, the Crohn's and Colitis yeah, website, there is brings, pregnancy and IBD, yeah. And also all the individual the medications have their guidelines on there as well. So Stacey yeah. brings us beautifully on to yes. breastfeeding. Yes. We're so all going to fall out. We, we are... <laughs> oh, no, we're not there yet. yet. We have had someone that's going to be about breastfeeding, asking us about breastfeeding, saying that she had, because she did want to breastfeed, and um, she had some really invaluable advice advice from the Breastfeeding Network. Um, And there's also a Facebook page called Breastfeeding Mums with IBD. So, or Breastfeeding with IBD, sorry. Um, And it's a very supportive group. So if you are breastfeeding, you may want to have to to check that out. Okay, So. so... 
do you want me to go? Oh, you well, go what are your first. thoughts? Let's let's have the yeah, un, yeah, yeah. the un. Yeah, we'll go across but, because yeah, yeah. Your, let's go your with experience you. was obviously I haven't got the experience yet. Are you doing like a like a? Oh, Stacey Brit sends her congratulations to you all. Oh, <laughs> oh, you um, and like, are you are you doing like an antenatal or anything? Are they like we've, pushing we've got the an antenatal class, but but we've got a separate breastfeeding class okay, to go cool. to. Um, obviously, I'm going to give it a go. Nobody knows what's going to happen to my crib. Because obviously, uh, one thing to add as well is I have never achieved remission with my Crohn's until the day I became pregnant. And I have my Crohn's is in full remission at the moment, which is wonderful. Woo! But <laughs> can no you get one pregnant knows. immediately after this one? Well, no, I don't want that many kids. <laughs> <laughs> getting you quite old now. I'm getting quite old now. <laughs> but so we don't know what's going to happen afterwards. So obviously, my intention is. But you're going to attend the breastfeeding yeah. class, and yeah. and my intention oh, nice. is to breastfeed. But as have, when we get to Heather, I'm sure she will uh, tell you problems happen that. Sometimes you just have to move on. So I uh, went to all the antenatal stuff. I wanted to be, I still want to be a good mum. Um, and everyone said, and everyone said, you've got to breastfeed. You've got to breastfeed, you've got to breastfeed, you've got to breastfeed. Um, and I was like, well, then of course I'm going to do that because I want what's best for my son. So at the antenatal thing, I was, you know, with the knitted boob and all this kind of thing and <laughs> like I'm still friends with some people that I went to the antenatal with and we still laugh about the knitted boob thing because the boys would put them on their heads and it's just not very grown up. Little people that are about to be parents. Them. Yeah. There, well, there's little imagine that. that sit there and knit these boobs imagine for that. these classes. Excellent. It's great. Well, so um yeah, yeah, you I you I'll sell them on the store. Um you should do knitted bowels. Oh, that would be much yes. more on brand. Yes. Yes. And you could you could snuggle babies in them. No. And then, anyway, sorry. Um, right, it could so be like a little nursing pillow. I was gonna breastfeed. I'm not sure what I, I think that is. I was gonna breastfeed. I was in with my son. They showed me the rugby ball hold and um, all this kind of thing. And I, I'm over there. I'm all over this. I I had a planned cesarean section um, because I've had two uh, bowel surgeries. Um, and that was a bit of a bun fight between gastro because gastro wanted me to have a planned section and obstetrics didn't want me to have a planned section. Um, and so basically they both told me what they thought and I decided to have a planned section um, <laughs> based on my research and my speaking to people. So I would very much, that's one of the reasons why I say you're in the driving seat. And as soon as I said, I'm going to have a planned section, um, obstetrics was just like, yeah, fine. <laughs> it just wasn't an issue. Um, they do have targets. Not yes. saying that that impacts it, mm -hmm. but they do have targets not to have people have sections and not just putting those two things as completely separate sentences. Um, so I, because I was on steroids, I had to have a massive, I had to be put on a larger dose of steroids to have my son. So um, I was given a large, so they upped my steroids and then they had to bring my steroids back down again. So I was then trying to breastfeed. You can absolutely breastfeed when you're on steroids. So I thought, I'm doing this. They're like all the, you know, women in pink that wander around and tell you that if you don't breastfeed, you're a bad person. Um, they all go, you're doing great, you're doing great. And then I got sent home and um, you kind of go into a lull. I think it's quite standard yep. that when you've been home a day or two, you just kind of like get really, really depressed. And I, you're tired and it's like, it's, it's like change. not new and exciting, but it is new and exciting. And you feel this that you should feel a certain way. It's new, exciting yes. and scary, I think. Exactly. And that's when you've got IBD Because when not. you're in hospital, <laughs> yeah. you've got all those medical professionals. They yeah. might not be right yeah. by your bedside <clears throat> or whatever, but they're you know in they're the there. Further yeah. and, there. Yeah. and then when you get home, it's just you or you and your mm. partner, you and your husband, yep. whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I got home and I was breastfeeding my son. Don't breastfeed my son, don't you worry. And then the midwife came around, not the midwife, the health visitor came mm. around and was like, when was the last time you did a pee? And I was like, in hospital can't remember and they were like well, that's really quite important and so then at about two o'clock in the morning they said um if he hasn't had a poo by nine o'clock phone argyle ward which is where you phone and so then we got called back from argyle ward at midnight saying bring him in immediately and he got tested for liver failure he got tested for this he got tested for that he got tested for that and um <clears throat> he basically it turned out that he just hadn't eaten since he was born 
and so that. Were you adds, just giving him water? You know, you're not allowed to give him water. No, I mean, no. Out of here. <laughs> I wasn't even giving him that. Oh. But I've been seen, but I've been signed off. You have to be yeah. signed off by the breast feeding people. So I stood there in front of a consultant, um, pediatrician, in tears after thinking my son got like you literally they tell you all these tests like if you've never seen a three-day-old baby have a blood test it's not pleasant they literally bleed their foot and it is yes. not nice um and obviously it was my entire life i'm you know i'm gonna make this baby's life great and here mm -hmm. we are three days in and i can't even give you a meal man so i felt absolutely dreadful so basically this consultant pediatrician stood in front of me and went just bottle feed him just, just make this go away. Mm. Just make this pain go away. That's and I'm really like, good, yeah. I am a dreadful person. I am a failure as a person. And I can only say this without crying because it was four and a half years ago. Um, I will tell you the massive failure I felt because of people, how hard people push breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And I literally stood in front of, a, mm -hmm. and he said, I'm a consultant pediatrician. I wasn't breastfed. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, like, would you want your son to be a consultant pediatrician? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll yeah. do that. Yeah. I'll do that. Um, and he was like, just go. And and I said, I don't even, I don't even know how to do it. I didn't go to those classes. I was going to be like the earth mother. <laughs> um, and so then I had to spend another night in hospital. And they basically said I had to be signed off by the bottle feeding nurse. So the bottle feeding nurse walked up to me and the experience of being taught how to bottle feed was so different to the experience of being taught how to breastfeed. So the woman walked up to my bed and went, are you sure you want to do this? You know that breastfeeding is really the best thing for your <laughs> child oh, and great. listed all the reasons. And quite frankly, I could have smacked her in the face. Mm. And I'm so angry that basically she didn't give a damn about my son's well-being. And at that time, it was about my well-being as well. She just had to give me the lines about breastfeeding. Um, and as it turned out, due to like the, there's basically medically, there were good reasons why I might not be able to breastfeed, um, which obviously had come to pass. But that hadn't been shared with me. All that was shared with me was breastfeeding, 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 breastfeeding. So I read things like that and it i worry that this breastfeed at all costs message which <clears throat> ripped me apart i cannot tell you and i know other people without ibd have been ripped apart by it so i think you should breastfeed if you can i think that's mm. great i'm got Please ridiculous don't feel bad if you can't then. exactly yeah. for yeah. any reason exactly. whether it's the child won't or you can't yeah don't feel bad so as long as you feed your child it doesn't matter yes. exactly i totally Absolutely. agree and the, it was my number one pet hate when i was pregnant was how many people would come up to me and they'd be like, oh, congratulations, you're pregnant. Are you going to breastfeed? Yeah, exactly. Why is that number two exactly. question? Yeah. Why does it matter whether I'm going to breastfeed? I, I, I had a completely I, different experience. No, don't worry. I've, I've got a uh, weird surname because my husband's French, okay? And in France, they have higher breastfeeding rates and it's not pushed at all. Mm -hmm. Like you never get us. It's basically a mother's choice. Yeah. You know, they basically say, you could do it this way, you could do it this way. And I went to France, I was bottle feeding, my son was only three months old, I took him to meet his family in France. And no one thought anything of the fact I was bottle feeding. Yeah. It didn't even occur to anybody that I was. And I told a couple of my friends mm -hmm. a couple of summers later how awful I felt about it. And they were just appalled that we have mm -hmm. these people mm -hmm. that go around hospitals. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, why does France have higher adoption of breastfeeding? Yeah. You know, when we, they don't have the ladies yeah. in pink. Sorry, uh, no, no. Sorry. I totally agree. I mean, I was incredibly lucky. I mean, I work within the childcare industry anyway. So it's almost my job to be like, oh, breast is breast. And I remember, I know we're running over, so I won't, I'll try not to be sorry, too long. No, no, not at all. But we had some technical difficulties. <clears throat> <Yeah. that>. Um, <laughs> Don't say it again. <laughs> Don't say it again. It'll shut down on us. Um, I'm I'm supposed to be like it's amazing blah 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 and it is and it's a fantastic bond that you get and blah 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 blah. Now I also had an elective C-section. Um, I wanted a C-section anyway, and I remember going to my twenty-week appointment and they went, "Oh, we'll see how you are later." And I walked out of that appointment going. <laughs> think so thank you very much i've already had a big discussion with my gastro team and it will be very similar a c-section and when it came very to 28 
weeks, my proper consultant walked in with my entire set of notes. He nearly threw his back out, putting them on the table and went, so a C-section, Heather. And I went, yes, please. And he went, it is what I highly suggest. Mm. So it was all down, done, dusted, blah, 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 blah. So pop that in there as well, if you want to. Are you have an elective C-section. I am, yeah. but that was actually decided by both of them. Oh, um, fab. Maybe they've grown up a bit and and the, since I've well, been I've, there. As well as the chromes, the surgeries, I've got the perianal fistula, I've got a stoma yeah. bag, and I've got lichen simplex. So it was. I the, loved it, having elective C section. There's no way on earth that they would have had to because it's too much tearing. Say, so. Elective C section was the most incredible I've experience. I've got pictures of the day. Ever. I've yeah. got pictures of the day. Like I knew the day. I could arrange dog care. Yeah. yeah you know what exactly. I mean? All yeah. of that. I knew the day. There's like pictures of me at seven o'clock in the morning outside Derriford holding my notes. Yeah. I'm going to have a baby today. Do you know what? The thing I was know, most miffed about it. was Tom ate in front of me. The, oh, lead no, midwife, well, that won't be the lead midwife. The lead midwife came and went, Oh, have you eaten something? <laughs> if Tom? I've got a star while yeah. bringing a life in this right. world, you're yeah. starving yeah, exactly. and Exactly. And she went, Oh, have, have you had something to eat? And Tom went, Oh, well, I had some cocoa pops this morning. And she went, Well, I don't want you hitting the deck. Brought him in a tray, <gasps> coffee. Don't shh. If I'm so yeah, <laughs> jam. <laughs> I was and like, I think Heather, what are you doing today? <laughs> there is a picture of, of, of this tray and me like that. Yeah. What time are you behind then? it? Seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I was at seven o'clock. Nine, they put the more nine, complex ones yeah. earlier in the day. 9.19 in the morning oh, whilst he was lot, born, I was very lucky. That's because they're doing but, it at like 4am then, just to make yeah. sure. Yeah. They, do, they told me that they do the most complex ones, which will be the ones with... Mm -hmm. like. So basically, yeah. if you've had like a... If you, Underlying if you, conditions. So like, if you're like a normal person i think i can call us all abnormal yeah if you're a normal person but you've had like a c-section because of like complications in your normal pregnancy um that's just that that is an elective c-section that you should be quite easy to do but if you've got kind of like complex medical history mm -hmm. all this kind of thing yeah. they like to do you first in case there's any issues or there's anything so they can give you a long time um that's so interesting because when i went in for my pre c-section bit they said that they do them last but then I was the first on the list. So yeah, I was confusing, confusing, confusing. confusing, confusing, confusing. You'll be first on the list. I was, so first. Because if I anyone, was definitely first. Because I, I was told it was quite. It was quite. Because they said to me, "You must have a C-section, and if you yeah. go into labour, that will be a massive yes, problem." They will so, put that yeah, pressure phone, on you. By the phone way, nine nine nine. They yeah. said if you go yeah. into labour, phone nine 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 on the first couple of and you tell them it's got to be as quick as you possibly yeah. can. Because they've got them. to get the baby before have it the goes drugs to put into you to slow it down so yeah. they can get the baby out. Yeah. yeah, and they will they will come and they put my understanding is they put like a like they, I didn't know this, but they do like a whoop so like you'll be known. Yeah. So you if yeah. you phone yeah. and you say, you know, oh Hannah Darrigan, they'll go, We're on our way. Yeah. You're put on you the know, where are you? And they'll go to you and they will go to you straight away because obviously they could Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Totally no, that's all right. I know sorry, we would have been sorry. around. But anyway, sorry. breastfeeding wise, I remember I was adamant I wanted to try and I wanted my, my I had um three aims really. I had I wanted to get through the first day. Um because to give the initial um like Liquid gold, as yes, yeah, absolutely. The yeah. liquid gold, um, the liquid gold. I wanted to cool? get it what? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, colostrum. There's three. Yeah, right? yeah, colostrum. 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 Yeah. Like liquid gold. There that's what they call it. That's well, in the concoction, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. So I wanted to get through the first day, and if I could get through the first day, then I wanted to get to a week, and if I could get through a week, then I wanted six weeks. And if I could get six weeks, then I'd see how it'd go. You had a much more sane rationality so, to so it than me. I, I was I, like, I'm, I'm an earth mother. I had three three points because I I have had <clears throat> varying moments of remission. I kind of have medical induced remission. Now that's what I call it. It's not a um, like the medical, medical term, term at all. I call it medical induced remission because I am still on medication, which is keeping me in remission. I'm not in remission without medication. Does that make sense? So yeah. that's what I call it. And that's my reasoning for it. Um, I'm on Humira <laughs> in Rowdy, whatever you want to call it. Um, I thought you were on Stellar. And I Stellar. was on it all the way through my mm. pregnancy until the third trimester 
when they took me off of it because it crosses over the, the placenta. placenta. Yeah, I remember that. Um, my third trimester was my hardest, to be entirely truthful. What, in um, terms of your Crohn's or just generally? Generally. Hell I yeah. I Hell didn't, yeah. I didn't know whether it was Crohn's and I didn't know whether it was pregnancy and neither did the obstetrics team and neither did the gastro team and none of them would touch I've me with a barge pole. I've got a good story for that. So when they were <laughs> um, doing my um, uh, elective C-section, they said that it was the most, at the time, the most senior obstetric lady uh, surgeon there said, oh my God, you've got a twisted ovary. That must have been incredibly painful. Like, like I have people that can't move because they've got a twisted ovary. <laughs> and I went, all oh, right, really? this is me, like, literally. And I'm like, okay, and they're like, shall I take it out? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Just I'm mm. cutting my new baby. Um, and, Whilst she you're like, in and, there. She, and she came to see me the next day and went, you're well odd. And I was like, I've got Crohn's disease. Yeah. I just thought that's yeah, yeah, just, yeah. It's just another pain. So, so just they were just like, oh well. Yeah. Yeah. And you it turns out I haven't got Crohn's. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like ovary the whole time. Um, yeah, it was. It, it's a very interesting thing. Everyone's experience of uh, pregnancy with IBD will be different, as you can tell by all three of us. Yep. Same and with our breastfeeding yep. journeys will all be different. Hannah struggled. Lindsay hasn't started hers yet. I'll let her tune in next month. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Tune in in December. In yeah. December. After <laughs> Christmas, when she's had a little bit of time to kind of get used to it. Yeah. Um, for me, um, they try to make baby latch on Walsh jaw in theatre. Um, yep. That's just something that they do. They do ask if you're going to attempt to breastfeed or if you're not, you know, they weren't overly pressurised then. Um, maybe because I'm quite a strong-willed person mm. and I just told them how it was going to be. Um, <laughs> and he wouldn't latch in theatre. And I was a bit like, oh my God, he won't latch. Like, <gasps> I failed at the first hurdle. Like he's literally just been pulled out of me and he can't, he won't even latch on. Like what is going on? He was born at 39 weeks and two days, by the way. They like around the 39, as yeah, close yeah. to 39 they said, weeks you, I as think possible mine was 39 and one to day. try and like... stop you from going into labor. That's yeah, why yeah. they do it then. Um, and they went, it's all right. We'll try again when you've been moved into recovery. And then the little bugger would not stop <laughs> wanting to feed. I was very, very lucky. I managed to have two week, uh, two days of complete solely breastfeeding him. Um, I can tell you my nipples were not happy with me. Oh, <laughs> in the slightest. Hey, we're it's talking worked. about pregnancy. Yeah, we're yeah, talking about a bunch. Right. You may right. as well exactly. talk about yeah, our nipples right. as well. Right. So we're talking about the other end. So I apologise. You're right. I forgot who I Honestly, was with. Honestly, <laughs> I'll tell it how it is. Um, they weren't happy, so get some lanolin. Yeah. yeah. Lansino cream to pop on there. Miming. It You're be... miming now. <laughs> I think it's we're fun. edging over the, the line here. <laughs> no, no, I haven't said anything. It's no, it's the miming. It's, it's fine. Um, you're about to have a baby and everyone's going to see bits. Yeah. It's not going to be the, the Although, thing that if you, you're like happen. a lot of us, your dignity went for you. Your dignity went for Dignity. Yeah. Um, Rear view mirror. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Where is that? <laughs> um, and after two days, I was... Knack I was absolutely knackered. He was feeding every hour, maybe two, um, and things. And I remember Tom hadn't had any sleep that second night. He he'd had sleep the first night because he'd gone home. Mm -hmm. I had nothing, absolutely yeah, had nothing. And Tom it's an went, exciting and, night. Yeah, and Tom went. The first night, I'm, first I'm, night, I'm, yeah. yeah, Tom went. I'm struggling, and and my initial. Thing was I'd already said I was going to add in a bottle anyway mm -hmm. a bottle of formula um, in case I needed to go back onto medication and that was my important thing I did not want but my own personal opinion people can breastfeed and breastfeed and breastfeed and then just give a bottle to, to, to the child they can breastfeed for a year two years whatever they want to do um, that's up to you or you can <clears throat> bottle feed from the minute that they come out it is really not an issue um, but I wanted to add that bottle in in case I needed to go back onto medication. And we, I think, 
we added in maybe one or two bottles and then I went against all breastfeeding um, advice and I went to bottles overnight because then yeah, it meant both say, myself and yeah. Tom and could, could bottle feed. Um, yeah, it didn't matter. And there are a few people I was so that. tired. Yeah. I was hurting. I yeah. wanted to feed my son, but I needed that kind of get out clause. Yeah. And it goes against Sweet. all breastfeeding kind of um, it does, but at advice. the same time, they're still getting the breast milk. Exactly. But you're just getting a night's sleep yeah. with it. So. And it helped. It helped greatly. And I did that for um, on and off. I did I did three weeks. I needed mm. some antibiotics at three weeks and then managed to keep going until six weeks. And now my son is solely bottle fed from six weeks. I'm back on Humira. But now the thing i wanted to quickly go on to is is on this breastfeeding it and medication yeah now under the um like gastro team they will and they will advise you not to breastfeed on any medication mm. because under nice guidelines nothing is safe because it is unethical to well um, they can't be sure of it yeah, they will never it's, advise it's, yeah, it's, anything it's, unethical it's not to, to test on a pregnant woman yes, and exactly. it's unethical to test on a breastfeeding woman exactly. so they won't do it so yeah. it's just their advice they cannot exactly, say yeah. that it is it's not unethical safe. to breastfeed, to breastfeed your yeah, baby yeah, yeah. while but it's unethical for them to, to advise, advise that it. they can never well it's all right for stacy yeah yeah. So, but there are a lot of women out there that it does. It's up to yeah. you. She she, it is she was on Macapture and Potato Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. So she's, it is completely fun. up to you. Now, on that IBD, uh, Breastfeeding with IBD um, Facebook page, and also the Breastfeeding Network, it is run by a lovely lady who is also a pharmacist. She also has Crohn's disease and has done a lot of research into it um and you will actually find that most medications you can breastfeed on but it's your with, call with the we are not medic we are not medically yeah, we trained, are not medically and, trained. We, and, and please, i would not nobody should no nobody please, should be breastfeeding advice, go and talk to if you want advice go and have a look at the breastfeeding network and go and have a, a chat with the lady that runs it she's called wendy jones um, and you can message her like directly on the page and things. At the end of the day, yeah. the thing sure I think the, I think one of the staff. core things throughout everything we've said is you can see how we just got three women three complete, together, yeah. and we've got three completely yeah. different stories. Yeah. And Lindsay's is still being written yeah. um, as we sit here. Um, and you know, you have to you have to be in the driving seat yeah. and make decisions, and you'll have to make decisions in a way that you haven't had probably had to make decisions before with just working with one team if you've got lots of complex things maybe you have but that would be the thing i would say is just get information you know talk to people yes. sit chat with people but also um, don't be bullied if you think something is that, wrong don't, that then you've yeah. got to listen to yourself as well because your health and your baby's health is down to you basically you will also exactly. have they can advise you they can tell you what to do and what not to do but you are the person yeah. that has to be able to say yes or no. You will constantly get mixed advice from every yeah. single health professional that and you get. Person, and the person, health people visitors. will yeah. think they know what you're, do oh yeah, that happened to me, and so and so and so yeah. and so and so. And it's like, you don't know me because you're not me. You don't know my baby because, and I would say that when your baby's small as well, mm -hmm. everyone's got an opinion on it. And the only the expert in your child is you. Mm -hmm. I, so, rem I remember my, cool. my one thing. Yeah, was, we need, yeah, we yeah, have, we need yeah. to have yeah. to wrap it up. Go ahead, thank you for tuning in. Yeah. About the IBD, pregnancy and IBD oh, yeah. on Crohn's and Colitis UK. Yeah. Yes, there, say, what, there what? are information books on the Crohn's and Colitis website. And they they're have qualified. Recently, yeah. <laughs> they have, they've got their big team and things. So they have recently updated it as well um, to include lots and lots of medications and things on there, um, which is pregnancy and IBD? Yes, it is. Is yeah. that yeah. the... On the Crohn's and Colitis website. On the Crohn's and Colitis website, 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 under the information... Yeah. And if you're not a member yeah. of Crohn's and Colitis UK, you should be. Just Because it supports yeah. people with yeah. Crohn's and Colitis, so please... Because there is a lot of information. But you can have that, even if you're not.
much. Yes. And it's also, really if, pay for it for you. if you yeah. are someone who's been through something that's been a question that's been asked tonight and you think you can still advise, please still message us because mm. we can pass that information on to the people who've asked the questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, just you. before we go, we have a ball on the 12th of October, people, and we still have some spaces. So message us for tickets. We've got amazing raffle ticket, uh, raffle prizes, auction going on. We've got live bands. We've got photo acapella booth. groups. We've got photo booths and a, a lovely meal. And so yummy food. please get in contact to book How your much? tickets. It's £42 a person. And um, oh, we just it's going to be a cracking night. So you don't want to miss it, really. Is it the Crown Plaza in Plymouth? So please book your tickets because we need to make sure we've got your space available. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very, very much, much. Thank for you for listening in with us tonight. Shall I close that? Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.